and welcome to International Voices with Udo Fluck. I'm your host, Udo Fluck, and this is the second podcast that we are recording. We started last month with Tom Benson, the executive director of Arts Missoula, and we talked about sister city relations and how it all started. And you are welcome to listen to that podcast. It is on our website at Arts Missoula and on the 103.3 website as well. But today it's my great pleasure to welcome Missoula Mayor John Engen to the second podcast and to talk a little bit about international activities and international programming in town. And um, so without any further ado, good morning, Mayor Engen. And a bright good morning to you, Dr. Fluke. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Thanks for taking the time this morning to be here and uh, to visit with me. I thought in somehow organizing this a little bit, we could talk perhaps about um, sort of the value of sister city programs. And I, I'd like to connect to my visit with Tom last month a little bit about that. But we didn't really talk about sort of the outside drive. We, we talked about the value of of sister cities as an engine for diplomacy and peace building, but we didn't talk much about sort of the economic development and investment like trade agreements and business partnerships. And so I thought I'll, uh, we could start with that and I could ask you, how do you see Missoula benefiting in that regard? Well, so you don't know what you don't know, right? And so you, we start building these relationships with other communities. We learn from those other communities, and some things just sort of begin to happen organically. For example, our sister city relationship with our friends in Palmerston, North New Zealand, um, has resulted in uh, us looking at the way we communicate here at the city. We find that the the Kiwis are doing that better than we do. And so we're going to steal a few plays from their book. And we'd like to think that they have been able to take a few plays from ours as well. Um, and then, you know, our, our the delegation that you were leading uh, last year, um, we took folks from the business community along as well. Brigida Freer um, from the uh, Montana World Trade Center um, has started to cultivate some of those relationships. They don't happen overnight. Right. Um, none, this isn't a this isn't a short term. Uh, effort, but just beginning those conversations is tantamount to something happening. How can these these business connections trickle down to benefit the average Missoulian? Because I think that's always sort of the question um, is how, how does that benefit the average person? Well, it's it's interesting, and this this isn't a, a function of a sister city relationship necessarily. But I, I spent some time uh, a couple of weeks ago with a local manufacturer um, who's begun to develop some relationships in Australia, and it turns out there's an incredible demand for his product in Australia, um, and and he's beginning to build those relationships and recognize that uh, even in Missoula, Montana. Montana, we're, we're part of a global community, um, and we believe that there are some of those opportunities in New Zealand. There may be some of those opportunities in, uh, in Germany as well by virtue of our relationship there. And really, your work here um, in the business-to-business -business, uh, communication, that's new for us in terms of sister city relationships. Um, and again, if you're, if you're not opening those doors and beginning those conversations and being intentional about it, you're not going to get anywhere. It's all sort of happening. Hazard. So at the end of the day, there could be business relationships that result in employment, in trade, um, and in growth in both economies. I would like to now shift gears from the uh, the, the sort of sister city uh, connection uh, part to to sort of cultural and and international programming in general, and wanted to ask you with your background as a, a mayor in Missoula, and you have seen many sort of cultural uh, events and cultural programming come together over the years. Uh, and I'm just thinking of last year when we were 
planning on the Missoula Together event, all of these cultural things, how important are these these cultural programming activities for a city like Missoula? Well, I would argue that if there were an international city in Montana, it's most likely Missoula. There are a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is the University of Montana. The other is that, again, we're, we're being intentional about, um, about what, what a variety of cultures uh, can bring to a community, that cultural diversity, that interest. Um, and, you know, I always say that uh, our differences are worth celebrating um, because we have so much in common, right? So we talk about food, we talk about art, um, we talk about language, we talk about commerce. Um, the fact of the matter is that Missoula has welcomed refugees in our community for decades, um, beginning with the Hmong in uh, in the 70s and 80s. Um, and those folks have added to the fabric of our community in many ways, and it's hard to imagine Missoula without the Hmong today. As we look at um, the folks who have uh, uh, plugged into our international programs at the University of Montana, um, and we got our hooks in them, folks like you, and there are others, um, we have imported talent, and that talent has um, has been incredibly beneficial to the community. You, for example, you're in schools all day long teaching kids about a bigger world, and they're going to need to know about a bigger world because it's getting bigger every day and smaller at the same time, if that makes any sense. So, uh, you know, I was at a lecture last night with regard to climate change, and boy, we're in this together, and we have a huge responsibility, but we're, none of us are going to be able to do it alone, right? So it's that bringing people together and understanding in a, in a world that wants to be more divided, um, we have some opportunities to unite around good stuff. I couldn't agree with you more. I think um, a lot of my motivation comes exactly from that, the idea of uh, if you want to cause change, you got to start early, um, and um, you you have to work with people in all different areas. I, I remember when um, we talked about the importance of... Um, of intercultural training, uh, and you said this would be important for a city like Missoula, where um, individuals are interacting with people that have all kinds of different ethnic and cultural backgrounds. And so for people to be more prepared or feel more comfortable in interacting with the other, uh, the unknown, that sometimes can be perhaps um, scary, because you just don't know enough about the other, and how training in all areas could help. And I, I wanted to ask you on this, I um, was wondering if you could speak a little bit on the importance for for city and county employees to take advantage of intercultural trainings and how this could, again, help the city perhaps in its international ideas or in its, uh, in its international approach, but also much more locally for the interaction with people in the city. We're in the service business at the city of Missoula, right? That's all we do. Um, and the, the people we serve um, are not homogenous and are becoming less so every day. And so the better equipped we are to meet people where they are, to communicate clearly, to understand needs, desires, all of that is extraordinarily important. And we need to train ourselves to do that. You're doing some of that work. And, and this isn't just international Right, we serve uh, a lot of indigenous people here at the city of Missoula, and we've got to get better at it. The history of this country in the West, in particular, the subjugation of native people, the systemic racism, all of that weighs heavily on institutions. Right, yeah. and unless we're again intentional about addressing those issues, um, we're going to keep doing the same thing we've always done, and the status quo isn't acceptable. Where do you see Missoula in the future, years from now, as we are moving, as you said earlier, if there would be an international city or a, a city with a lot of multicultural representation, where do you see Missoula in the future? 
Oh, would that I had a crystal ball because I would conjure it now. We build our strategic planning here at the city of Missoula around inclusivity. That word can be a a bit cliched. It's easy to fall back on. But at the end of the day, throughout all of our planning, and really we hope through our budgeting, we're trying to make sure that people aren't left out. We live in a world where a lot of people get left out. Uh, And again, if we're not intentional about trying to be aware of the folks who are never going to come to a city council meeting, um, who are never going to write me an email, um, if we're not if we're not paying some attention to those folks who don't have a voice, then we're being irresponsible. So in 50 years, I hope that Missoula is a place where everyone feels comfortable, cared for, loved, has a place to live, enough to eat, access to health care, transportation, and a good life and an opportunity. Well, thank you, Mayor Engen. I really appreciate your time this morning. I just wanted to mention an upcoming event as we're talking about cultural programming and international programming with the uh, Worldview film series that is going to continue. We started that in the fall of 2018, and we're going to continue that uh, this month on March 23rd with the movie Chocolat, That was produced in 2000, a British-American romantic drama. And then we have uh, three more films, one in April, one in May, and finishing up uh, in June. And has that uh, film series been successful? Is there an appetite in Missoula for that? There is an appetite, and uh, that's great that you're bringing that up and phrasing it that way, because every uh, season there's a committee that um, selects the movies, and um, selects a theme. And the theme for this uh, spring is Cultures at the Table, as all the movies are about food in film. And uh, there is an appetite, I would say. We had we started off in the fall of 2018 with Cultures in Motion. It was about dance in movies from around the world. And then we had Cultures on Cultures in Harmony, about music and film. Um, Last fall, we had Cultures on Display. It was about art in film. And so uh, the committee decided for this spring, uh, Cultures at the Table uh, would be a good continuation of the idea. And what's interesting is that there is a a core group of people. So the film series attracts um, all between... 40 and 60, sometimes even more than that, 70, 80 people uh, to the Roxy. And it's interesting when you look into the auditorium, there is a good half of the people that come to every single one of these. So there are people that love uh, foreign films, uh, that love the idea of uh, having access to it at the Roxy Theater, and, um, and it's free. So it it really should not prevent anybody from not coming. And then there is the other half are people that um, may find the topic interesting or the specific movie, or they might just not have anything to do on that Monday evening. And so it's really nice to see that it builds momentum as I think this group that comes to these every month has grown steadily. And that's really nice to see. And you're doing some international speakers as well, yeah? We started last year in the fall with an international community speaker series. It's always sort of difficult to get these things off the ground. You have this idea and uh, you talk to people about it and they say, oh, great idea. And I think we 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 should uh, have something like this. But then it needs to it needs to sort of stand on its own feet. It needs to develop. And it took about a year for the Worldview film series to do that. And um, we were really uh, grateful uh, to have sponsors in town that immediately said, this is a great idea. We would love to support this. And so that's why the films are free for the community. To us, of course, the Roxy still has the expense of getting the films and having the auditorium and a projectionist. And so there's cost involved. But uh, this, these costs per film are covered by local businesses and organizations that are supporting the film series. And there are series sponsors that basically sponsor the entire spring or the entire fall. Uh, U.S. Bank is among them, Rydeck Law, um, Lake Missoula Tea Company. 
those are the organizations that are sponsoring. And then uh, individual films can also be adopted. And so we had in the past and continue uh, to have that. Uh, the International Rescue Committee um, has adopted a film, Soft Landing. We had uh, the Janet Rankin Peace Center. We had the Missoula Symphony, Pink Grizzly, all great local businesses and organizations that are appreciating a window to the world. And, uh, and so this has really worked out nicely. But back to the International Community Speaker Series, that we just started last fall and, and basically trying to get it off the ground. We asked around, um, we had uh, the good fortune of having Tony Grace here uh, last year in the fall, um, the international relations manager from our sister city, Palmerston North in New Zealand. And so um, we basically built the kickoff event around her presence in Missoula and invited about half of the Missoula delegation that went to Palmerston North last year in the spring to be there. And we had great Native American representation that evening. Uh, we had uh, city council uh, member Heather Harp there. Um, uh, Brigitte Miranda Freer was there from the Montana World Trade Center. And so we had a very nice panel. Basically, uh, you know, what's the advantage of, of having a sister city in all different areas? And they were the people that could uh, that could speak on that. And so that was our kickoff. And then we had two other presentations in the fall. Now for this spring, we just had this past Monday a presentation of a local uh, teacher and musician, Dylan Dwyer, who had the opportunity to spend two years in the Sultanate of Oman teaching. And uh, he was there with his wife and um, had a great experience and shared that. And then we have uh, next month a uh, presentation on Japan, Land of the Rising Sun, by Jake Krylik, who um, has traveled to Asia last year in the fall as well. Then we have we're finishing off the series in May with a presentation by the UN Peace Corps representative that has served in Lesotho, South Africa, and the Philippines. And we do these not only to inform uh, sort of in retrospect about something, but also the idea of encouraging people to participate. And if somebody has sort of a little bit like uh, tell us something, uh, you know, if you have a great experience, share it. Have others uh, be included and uh, create an opportunity for others to learn about other places, other cultures. And so uh, we hope that this continues and that we have many more places and, and many more speakers that can enrich our community. And, and we do this at the Roxy, uh, at the Roxy Theater, because we believe that it's a great place. And the Roxy is wonderful to work with. And it's a, it's a well-known community theater. So people can, uh, can come to it and spend a, a Monday evening, either watching a movie or, or listening to a presentation. And um, we hope that this can grow over time. Well, I'm rarely there because we have city council meetings on Monday evening, but should that change at any point, I'll be seeing you at the Roxy on Monday nights. So, uh, Mayor Engen, I'm wondering, what are other sort of cultural programming activities that that you know of and that you have supported in the past that you think are important for the Missoula community? Funny you should ask that, Udo. So beyond the kind of the new programming that's afoot today, Missoula has a long tradition of international programming and sort of cultural exchange and celebration. We are home of the International Choral Festival, and that's been going on for decades here in the city of Missoula, um, largely volunteer-driven, and it's hard to imagine every third summer without that choral festival. We have uh, choruses from around the globe come to Missoula, um, and and music, song, the food, the fact that uh, that there are host families who are bringing people from around the world into their homes. Um, we get to learn a little bit about each other, and again celebrate some of those differences, but also rec- recognize how much we have in common. Um, and as we look around the community, you know, food is always sort of this that binds. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're seeing 
you know, for years, the University of Montana has had a, an international celebration, and food has been a significant piece of that. Um, you and I just met recently with uh, the Pacific Islanders Club from the University of Montana. They'll be hosting uh, luau that sounds fantastic on Easter at the Zach. And now we see food trucks popping up, right? So we have, uh, we have some folks uh, who are providing remarkable kebabs and shawarma at Imagination Brewing, and it all sort of comes together to make a place more interesting, right? When, when we visit other places, we're not interested in many cases in seeing the same thing, right? We, we, we like difference. Right. We like variety. Yeah. And Missoula's getting more and more of that variety, and I think people appreciate it. Another question that I was curious about, uh, Mayor Engen, is, uh, as you know, um, my office, uh, Global and Cultural Affairs, is integrated in Arts Missoula along with another um, educational program, uh, SPARK. And um, how, how important is an office or, in this case, a designated arts agency for a city like Missoula? Well, again, this goes to intentionality, right? So Arts Missoula, um, born as uh, Missoula Cultural Council, largely to support uh, a really organic uh, arts community. This is a place where you, know, you can't walk down the street without tripping over an artist, um, and that's a good thing. Uh, and and Arts Missoula is really organized around supporting uh, artists, um, supporting the arts economy, um, and supporting the city in that arts economy. Um, we branched into cultural affairs because art and culture are um, inextricable, right? And culture isn't a monoculture. So when we had the opportunity to, uh, I think, enhance our sister city relationships um, and and think a little bit differently about the way uh, the city of Missoula interacts with the world, it made perfect sense for that, uh, that uh, global and cultural affairs component to live within the Arts Missoula organization. We had the infrastructure in place. Um, we had a, a solid board of directors, good staff, um, and it allows the city to um, be supportive without tipping up an entirely separate department, which happens in some communities. Um, but frankly, we're, we're better off outsourcing that to you all. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Mayor Engen, we talked a lot about uh, cultural and international programming. And um, I'm wondering, can you tell us some experiences that you had with uh, international activities, um, international travel, uh, anything international? I grew up in Missoula. I am far from a world traveler, um, but I've I've had the opportunity to cruise through the Panama Canal, for example, and being on the ground in uh, Central America was fascinating for me. In as much as uh, you don't experience poverty in the same way in Missoula, Montana, as you might in some other places. And it was an eye-opener for me. I mean, that that's the beauty of being someplace else, whether uh, abroad or elsewhere in the United States. You get your eyes open to a, a, a wide variety of um, things that provide some perspective. Uh, having Having driven a rental car in London, I can tell you it's very difficult for me to take anyone who complains about traffic very seriously in Missoula. Having uh, experienced uh, the cuisine in Piccadilly, a tiny restaurant at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, but the food was so good that I sweated through it. There's a lot to be said for, for what you learn abroad and, and the perspective it gives you at home. What I always find fascinating about uh, the international activities um, that one brings back something that uh, that one likes particularly or thinks this is something that could be embedded in one's own culture. And if that uh, may be that um, you ate croissants in France and, uh, and now you're switching um, from the bagel to a croissant in the morning or whatever it may be or drinking a certain kind of tea because um, you, you learn to appreciate it somewhere else or um, whatever it may be down to a dessert or uh, I think are all things that, um, that are 
some of the benefits of of not just going somewhere somewhere for the experience somewhere else, but also uh, bringing something back and having that enrich your life. So I'm 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 glad to hear that when you're um, when you're thinking about traffic uh, in London and um, I spend a lot of time uh, growing up in Germany uh, in Frankfurt, um, which uh, was only about 30 miles away from where I grew up, and so downtown Frankfurt, uh, downtown um, London or Paris, you're absolutely right. Um, there are some real traffic issues. <laughs> I think the other thing that's interesting is um, we're inundated with information, right? And we are, we are as human beings prone to generalization. We like that which is simple and unambiguous. Um, and it turns out when you meet a human being from a, another culture, another religion, another race, they're no longer abstract, right? Right. It turns it turns out these are real human beings, right. um, flesh and blood, uh, and um, and it it's it's a lot more difficult to fear or hate um, or worry about or generalize um, a single human when you get to know. Them. Right, right, and I think the the fact that uh, when one really looks. Uh, closer at any uh, at any culture at any representative from another culture uh, to me it's always most amazing that we have more in common than what sets us apart and i think that that's uh, that's really sort of for me anyway uh, the the reassuring fact that uh, we can all um, we can all benefit from each other because we have so many similarities already, so many interests, so many concerns that are all of our concerns and are not just um, a specific uh, country or a specific region's concern that I think if we if we somehow can can look past the few differences that we might have, we could unleash an incredible potential on actually doing some amazing work and solving some of the really big problems, um, not by looking at uh, the differences, but by looking at what makes us strong and what allows us to, uh, to move forward. Well, we probably ought to close this podcast before I begin singing It's a Small World. And on that, um, Mayor Engen, thank you um, for your time today, um, uh, for sharing your thoughts and experiences, and um, for all your support. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for all you do. Mm -hmm.